This episode is brought to you in part by the Table Podcast from the Hendricks Center at Dallas Theological Seminary. I'm Daryl Bach, one of the hosts, and I invite you to join us as we discuss issues of God and culture, which includes anything and everything. Listen on your podcast app or at dts.edu slash the table. Hello, everyone. This is Chris, the host of the Truce Podcast. God willing, season six starts in just a few weeks. Really, just a few weeks on April 16th. First of all, that's really exciting. Thank you for your patience. I wanted to complete at least 20 of the over 30 episodes of season six before launching because it is so complicated and comes pretty close to home for many of us. But I'm almost there. To tide you over, I want to take you on a little journey. As you may know, I've been working towards doing truce full time for years, but it hasn't quite happened. So cards on the table, this is a fundraising pitch but also a behind the scenes look. A friend of mine told me that since the show is so highly produced, it can be hard to understand just how much work goes into it. So I thought I'd walk you through just one typical day in my life. Good morning, I got up at uh, 5.40, it's just past six o'clock now, I'm sitting down with some oatmeal and the book of Philippians, I'll be headed on to work soon. I sit at the table, eat my oatmeal with blueberries, brew up some tea to enjoy at work, and sneak out of the apartment well before sunrise. Here's the sound of a door closing. After a 15 minute drive, I'm at the transportation department where I check the TV screen inside to see which route I'm driving. As a permanent sub, things sometimes switch around on me. Any route is on the table. Then it's out to the bus. Okay, so it's 12 degrees outside on February. What does the life of a uh, Wyoming school bus driver look like? It's 6.30 in the morning. Well, first thing I gotta do is go check out your bus. So you walk out into the yard with a whole bunch of buses running. Exhaust everywhere. I won't make you listen to the whole process. It's a lot of inside and outside the bus, checking the lights and the oil and filling out paperwork. Now that I've checked the levels and the uh, hoses, wiring, gotta make sure that the bus actually starts. They usually do. The morning doesn't always move in a straight line. Sometimes things don't work, or someone is running late and I have to pre-trip a second bus. Because of student privacy laws, I can't record the actual driving portion of the route, but I usually transport the elementary kids and then the high school and middle school students. A few hours later... All right, it's 9.18 in the morning, just got home from work, well, the first job, and uh, gonna go (laughs) get started on the second job. First things first, get settled in. My apartment's small enough that I don't actually have a, uh, I don't actually have a desk, so I have to set up a bunch of books, stack them up so that I can put my laptop on top of that, get out the ergonomic keyboard. The first order of business is to order a book that uh, is from a historian that I'm uh, hoping to interview eventually, probably four months, five months from now. That way I have the book. That often takes a little while. It's a lot of digging around on publishers' websites and finding the right contact person. Okay, that email is sent, and uh, the next step for me now, after having looked at the other emails, and I'm pulling up the uh, script that I'm going to read through today and hopefully record, God willing, and it's Reagan's Shibboleths is the name of the episode. So one of the things that makes this show kind of unique amongst Christian podcasts is that I script out a lot of the dialogue that I say on the show, By the time I'm writing the script, I've already read at least one book, often several. Uh, I start the season off by reading some broad histories of the season and what I'm going to be covering. And then I go and find specific experts who have really looked into their specific topic. Scripts are usually 8 to 12 pages long, typed out single space. I'm sometimes working on as many as six different episodes at the same time because maybe a book hasn't come in or I'm waiting on an expert to set an appointment to record. On the day in question, I had three episodes in various stages of editing, plus the script I was proofreading, and another script in process that I recorded a week later. Two more interviews were scheduled for the coming weeks. Most of the season is laid out in advance on a spreadsheet so I can plan all the topics I need to cover. I use columns to keep track of each step. For example, one lists the social media tasks that need to be done, another whether or not a graphic has been created, if I have typed and posted the show notes, and if bonus episodes are on Patreon. Generally, at this time, I start doubting the episode. 
that I've made and wondering if it's high enough quality, if it's what I should put out. I also have to learn to trust the process after, you know, these hundreds of episodes to understand I've got good facts, I've got good guests, I've got good data. I just have to trust the script now and uh, continue in the recording process. So I've got to pack up my computer, my microphone, my recorder, and uh, walk over to the church so I can record. Okay, so here I am in my church basement, and I'm getting my laptop out. I may have to wait for just a couple minutes to record because uh, there's a group of people standing in the hallway just down the way having a conversation. So hopefully they hopefully they go away. <laughs> But it's one of the things about a shared space. You have to be open to uh, sharing it. In the meantime, I'll tell you what I'm looking at. I have uh, my script open. And it has basically all the words I'm going to record today in it, as well as the lines I'm going to have friends read. I'll have the, the lines batched so I can knock out several in one recording so I don't have to bother my friends as often. In brackets, I've got the name of the clips that I'm going to insert. In this episode, I've got historian Rick Perlstein, uh, some... Uh, clips with him, and I've got some audio that I've gotten from places like C-SPAN of historic events. Okay, here it goes. I think, uh, I think things have calmed down. This episode is part of a long series exploring how some evangelicals... During that recording, I had to keep pausing because little kids were playing down the hall. Again, shared space. The recordings take a while. I get up early, and I don't always sleep well, and sometimes I just have to muscle through. Every now and then I have to record the same sentence four or five times just to get it right. It, be, it begins each morning. It begin it, it begin it begins each morning with it begins each morning with me sneaking out of the room. <clears throat> if I'm working on a batch of episodes, I can only record one every day or two because otherwise I'll use up my voice and it doesn't sound so good. Headed home and should have just a little under half an hour to cook some lunch and get everything put away and get ready for my afternoon bus route. Then it's back to the transportation department to drive the afternoon route. That takes between three and three and a half hours. When the kids aren't on the bus, I frequently play an audiobook that relates to the show on a Bluetooth speaker. This season, I made a lot of headway on the book Milton Friedman, The Last Conservative, while driving an empty school bus. Around five o'clock, I park in my spot, give it a sweep, and then take care of any paperwork. Okay, so I had to go grocery shopping on the way home, so I don't normally get home this late unless I have, you know, some chore to do, but 5.53, going in the door. <sighs> That's a full day. I gotta make dinner, <laughs> gotta do life stuff, but God willing, no more work for the night. Most days, it's around 11 hours of work. Sometimes, it's even longer. Since Wyoming is so spread out, we drive the students up to nine hours away to participate in sporting and academic events. For example, this year I drove to Casper with the basketball team, which, you know, took five hours. Then I dropped them off, fueled the bus, and returned to edit an episode while they played. It's often pretty cold, so I sometimes have to go into the schools to work. This is audio from my recent trip with the swim team. It's loud, right? But sometimes, we do what we have to do. My base schedule is 30 hours of driving the bus every week and 20 hours working on Truce with a lot of progress made on holiday breaks. Each episode of Truce involves reading large books, totaling several thousand pages already this season, and I haven't even started dropping episodes. I take notes with page numbers so I can annotate the scripts. Many episodes feature interviews that have to be scheduled and recorded. Then I bring all of that into my editing software, I use Hindenburg, and then cut it all down. I like to go through each edit at least three times before they run, just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes, and I often do this while out for a walk or a jog. And then around nine o'clock, it's off to bed. Pretty soon, I'm up to do it all again. Why? Because I believe in this show. I wanna do my best to get it right. And let's face it, there are not a lot of highly produced podcasts in the Christian market, and I think we can fix that. This season is so, so complicated, as I tell the story of how some evangelicals tied themselves to the Republican Party in the 1970s and 80s. And that kind of thing takes time. Someday I'd love to do this show full-time so I have a healthier work-life balance and hopefully can bring on a staff to help out. I've been holding down this schedule for about six and a half years, and I'm actively fighting burnout every day. Now listen, 
There is no pressure to give. And believe me, I get it. One of the big objections people have to going to church is that it feels like a money grab. If that's your reaction, skip it. But if you want to see more quality, biblical, historical, and fun podcasts, now is a great time to help make that happen. If everyone who listened to the podcast gave just $15 a year, I could turn in my two weeks notice tomorrow. If you'd like to be a part of making this process a little easier, visit trucepodcast.com slash donate to learn how. I can work with PayPal, Patreon, Check, or Venmo, where you can find me at at trucepodcast. And great news, we're already halfway to the goal. $20,000 more and I can leave my job, pay rent, and afford healthcare. No frills, but a decent living. Together, we're building something pretty incredible from a cluttered table in my apartment. Visit trucepodcast.com slash donate to help. And be sure to subscribe to the show so you get every new episode as it's released. That website again is trucepodcast.com slash donate. God willing, new episodes of Truce begin April 16th. Thanks again for your support of the Truce Podcast. God willing, we'll talk again soon.